No matter where you are in the world, it's likely that you're not too far away from a bird. Birds are among the most dominant animals on this planet, and they are the masters of all landscapes and ecosystems. Some birds are perfectly adapted for life at sea, others spend all of their time on land, and some spend almost all their time on the wing. Some groups of birds are more dominant than others, and in today's video, I will be focusing on the most dominant. There are some bird families that can be found almost all over the world, and the species in these families can look very different from one another. I have chosen four groups of birds that have achieved world domination, but of course, there are many more out there. Without further ado, we can take a look at our first bird family, and this family is the kingfishers. Kingfishers are generally small to medium-sized birds, and the majority of these birds are very brightly colored. They have a cosmopolitan distribution, with the majority of species living in the tropical regions of Africa, Asia, and Oceania. Today, there are 116 species of kingfisher, and these species are split into three subfamilies in 19 genera. They vary greatly in size, shape, and color, but the majority of species like to feed on fish. They usually perch above a lake or river, and then dive in once they find a target. Of course, not all kingfishers feed in this way, as some feed on mollusks, insects, spiders, and reptiles, and some have even been witnessed targeting other birds' nests. The diet of a kingfisher can change drastically from species to species, and some species even have unique adaptations to help them target different prey. Australia is home to quite a few kingfisher species, but some of the most famous kingfishers in Australia are the kookaburras. The kookaburras are terrestrial tree kingfishers, and they live a very different life from the kingfishers of Europe. There are five species in the kookaburra genus, with the largest being the laughing kookaburra. As these birds are relatively large, they go after larger prey, and they can often be seen hunting other kingfishers, lizards, and even venomous snakes. Kingfishers can be found along the vast majority of the world's rivers, and one species, in particular, is very dominant. The common kingfisher, also known as the Eurasian kingfisher, is around the same size as a sparrow. They have one of the largest distributions of all the kingfishers, being found over large parts of Eurasia and North Africa. The reason this species is so successful is the same reason why most kingfishers are so successful, their adaptability. This species will feed on a wide range of aquatic prey, and when food dries up in the river, it can move to marine environments. Their hunting success rates are also very impressive. From a perch, the common kingfisher has a success rate of around 71%, but if the common kingfisher dives after hovering, it has a success rate of around 38%. Their hunting ability and adaptability have helped them to take over the world, and they won't be going anywhere anytime soon. The next group of birds we will be taking a look at are the owls. There are over 200 species of owl alive today, and these birds are generally solitary and nocturnal. They have binocular vision, sharp talons, and feathers adapted for silent flight, and these adaptations have helped them to take over the world. Owls are generally divided into two families, the true owl family and the barn owl family. The barn owls are among the most interesting owls in the world, and this is almost completely down to their dominance. The owls in the barn owl genus are very closely related to each other, but they are found all over the world. Many of these barn owl species have multiple subspecies, and this again highlights their dominance. The common barn owl is the most widely distributed species of owl in the world, and very few birds have a wider distribution. It's found almost everywhere apart from polar and desert regions, and its success is almost completely down to its hunting ability. The barn owl, just like many other owls, is perfectly adapted for hunting at night, and its vision and hearing are matched by no other animal at this time of day. It often locates its prey before they even know it's there, and they are able to dispatch their prey in complete silence. They are able to target completely different prey in completely different ecosystems, 
and this is how they've been able to spread so effectively. Really, no other birds have the same abilities as the owls, and this is why they have achieved world domination. The next group of birds we will be taking a look at are the pelicans. Pelicans are a genus of large water birds, and they are characterized by their long beaks and large pouches. There are eight pelican species alive today, with the largest of these species being the Dalmatian pelican. These birds can be found almost all over the world, and some of them can even be found in the same area. One of the reasons why pelicans are so successful is because of their diet. Pelicans predominantly feed on fish, but they will sometimes target larger prey such as turtles, mammals, and birds. Because they have the ability to fly and they mostly feed on fish, they can easily fly from one water source to another, and this means that it's relatively easy for them to find food. Some will target both marine fish and freshwater fish, and each species has a slightly different way of catching their prey. Some species will try and catch their prey from directly underneath them, but some species, such as the brown pelican, will actually dive for fish. Of course, pelicans have one adaptation that helps them to beat their competition, and this adaptation is their throat pouch. This helps to trap the fish underwater, and then they can drain the water from their pouches once they reach the surface. This has proven to be a very helpful adaptation, and it's helped them to completely take over the world. Because pelicans have quite protein-rich diets, it means that they can grow to some pretty impressive sizes. Their size also helps them to become very successful birds, as it means they can easily bully their competition, and it limits the number of animals that can predate on them. They are very welcome visitors at wetlands due to their big personalities, but if you're a fish, they're one of your worst nightmares. The final group of birds we will be taking a look at are the ducks. Ducks are in the same family as swans and geese, but they are generally smaller than these birds. There are over 130 species of duck worldwide, and some of these species have very strange adaptations. Each duck species can look very different from the next, and some don't look like ducks at all. Some ducks, such as the shovelers, have large bills to help them filter food from the water, and some have large bumps on their bills to impress females. The diet and feeding behavior of ducks can differ greatly from species to species, and this helps us to distinguish them. The dabbling ducks mostly feed on the surface, the diving ducks dive for their food, and the sea ducks forage deep underwater. One of the reasons why ducks are so successful is because they are so diverse, and there are different ducks that slot into different ecological niches and ecosystems. They've completely taken over all wetland environments, and they often have to share habitats with one another. It's possible that these birds will even outlive us, and they have achieved world domination. Of course, there are many other birds that could have made it into this video, so if you think you know of any, then let me know down in the comments below. And if you'd like to see me make a similar video on another group of animals, then also let me know down in the comments below. But for now, thank you for watching, and until next time, goodbye.